Hey guys, so today we're going to do the second part of the spawning series, how to get your fish from start to finish ready to spawn. Um, in the last video, which I'll link in the description, we talked a little bit about some things you want to take into consideration before choosing to breed bettas. Uh, we talked a little bit about these individual pairs and why I chose them. If you guys didn't see that video, we're spawning a what's called salamander. Some people call these lavender, but I prefer the term salamander. Um, salamander butterfly half moons bred by Pat Sayawan in Thailand. And then we're breeding a pair of... Uh, Dumbos that I bred. This is my Dumbo line, um, lavender butterfly, kind of multicolor type thing. Um, and we talked about a little bit about what you want to look for in a fish that you want to breed, um, without getting into too much detail about standards and stuff like that. And I know a lot of you want me to. Um, go a little bit more in depth about standards and critiquing and I'll start doing that. We'll start doing some um, fish critiques down the road but I really wanted to try to keep this as simple as possible because not everybody breeds for show um, and there's nothing wrong with that. I personally still think it's important to try to breed quality and that's why I feel so strongly about learning the standards, but um, really people breed for different reasons and um, none of those reasons are invalid. So anyway, in this video we're going to talk about conditioning, what it is and how I do it. People will all do it differently no matter who you talk to, everyone has different opinions and different experiences and everyone does stuff slightly differently. So if you see something I'm doing and it's just not working for you or you've heard different and you want to try something different, feel free to try something new. Um, I try new stuff all the time even though I've been breeding for years and years and every once in a while I find something that works even better than the way I was doing it. So. Um, just keep in mind that everything I tell you is coming from my experience, my research, and uh, my opinion. So there's always uh, room for improvement or room for a different point of view. So let's talk a minute about what conditioning is. Conditioning is the word that we give for saying basically getting bettas ready to breed. Um, I personally like to say that my fish are always ready to breed. I always keep them well fed and I keep their water really clean and all that so that at any given point I'm able to take a male and a female from the shelf and they should breed. Now there's always things that can happen that cause you to not get a spawn, unexpected things, but for the most part all my fish should be in a condition where they should be ready to spawn should I choose to spawn them. Now, that doesn't mean that you should feel that your fish are ready to breed at any time. A lot of people only breed one pair at a time. They keep their fish maybe in, you know, big pet tanks or community tanks or sorority tanks and they might not be in the greatest condition. So it's important to know how to set your fish up to condition it for breeding so that when you are ready to breed, you are successful. Now generally what is recommended for a conditioning period is two weeks. And there's actually a little bit of a reason behind this. Um, it's said that female bettas produce eggs on a cycle about once every two weeks. So if you take the time and feed your female really well for at least two weeks, you know that she should have a good store of eggs built up and be ready to spawn. That's not to say you can't condition your fish in less time a week, or and it definitely doesn't mean you can't go longer. In fact, these fish have been being conditioned for about a month now because I was already conditioning them before I started the series. 
And since I'm doing this series and I wanted you guys to kind of be able to come along the journey, it's um, delayed the spawning process with these guys so I can make sure I have time to film it for you. So um, two weeks is the rule of thumb, but you can definitely do it in a shorter amount of time or a longer amount of time. I will say that if this is your first spawn, if you've never conditioned a pair before, if you're not totally sure if your pair is ready to breed or not, take that two weeks. You can't go wrong taking that extra time. And it gives you a chance to make sure you have everything that you need all ready and set up to go before you spawn. Now the next video we do, which should come out next week, um, we'll talk about what you need as far as equipment, um, food for the fry, and stuff like that. Um, basically how to set up our spawn tank and get ready to spawn. And then the final video will be us introducing these pairs and with any luck um, getting them to spawn and seeing the fry hatch. So that's kind of how this thing is going to go. Now let's get back to conditioning. So as I said, we condition our fish for about two weeks. And during that time, we want to feed them a lot of food. We want to feed very high quality food. And we want to feed them as much as they want to eat. Now, one of my biggest pet peeves in this hobby is there's a myth that goes around specifically in groups that are geared more toward people that keep these fish as pets and not necessarily um, groups geared toward breeding or raising them and that myth is that you should only feed them as much as the size of their eye because they will bloat otherwise that's how big their stomach is yada 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 this is just not true I don't know how else to say it but besides it's just not true and please if you've heard that if that's what you think delete that from your mind send that file to the recycle bin and just forget it because more often than not, people that believe that myth and feed their fish that much have fish that are emaciated and barely hanging on to life because they're being starved. And starved fish are not going to breed well for you. So just forget about that. Feed your fish as much as it wants to eat. Now, that said, we also want to be feeding very high quality food because if you do feed your fish a low quality pellet, flake something like that that can lead to bloat constipation and issues like that if you're overfeeding your fish because those foods are made with stuff that these fish are just not evolved to eat or digest or process so that's kind of where the myth comes from but when we're talking about breeding fish we're already wanting to feed our fish the highest quality foods we can get our hand on, hands on so that these fish can be as healthy as possible and hopefully spawn nice and easily for us. So what are some of the things I feed my fish when I'm conditioning? Or basically all the time because as I said I like to keep my fish in breeding condition all the time so these are things I feed all the time. They're all always in my rotation whether I'm actively about to spawn a pair or if they're just hanging out waiting to be spawned. Um, the number one thing I feed is frozen blood worms. This makes up about 50 to sometimes even 75 percent of what I feed my bettas. Um, I have them thawed here in some tank water but you can get these at most local fish stores or big box stores. You can definitely order them online. Um, oftentimes it's cheaper to do that. I buy these in bulk because I feed them so often. Um, if you can't get frozen food where you live, there's other foods you can feed. But if you can get your hands on frozen blood worms, I highly recommend it. Um, also, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention live foods. Now, I don't want to talk too much about live foods because I feel like most of you who are watching this probably are just starting to breed or just interested in it. And you won't have um, cultures of live foods going and you might not want to start a culture of live foods. But if you can, um, 
live grindle worms, live white worms, daphnia, and um, mosquito larvae are amazing foods to feed your bettas. They will get so big, they'll get so eggy, they'll be so happy because that's what they're supposed to be eating. That's what they're evolved to eat. So if you can get cultures of any of those live foods or buy them in bags from local markets or fish stores or wherever, local hobbyists, do try to do that. I have uh, a culture of grindle worms that I keep going because that's one of my favorite live foods. It's super easy and it's small enough that my young juvenile bettas can eat it, but also the adults will eat them as well. Um, I buy live brine shrimp because my local fish store keeps live brine shrimp in stock, but I know a lot of you guys might not have a local fish store. Uh, white worms are great, but they can be iffy. They tend to need refrigeration. Um, and Daphnia is amazing, but I personally have found it hard to culture. Other people have no problems with it. So I think it just varies on your setup and your water for that. But definitely, if you have a way to get live foods, they're the best thing to feed, regardless of if you're conditioning or not. Um, I do feed my fish pellets. I buy the highest quality brands I can find and I mix them so that they're getting a variety. They're getting different brands which are going to have different uh, minerals added or added and different ingredients and stuff like that. But when we're talking specifically about fish that we want to get in top shape for breeding, I do try to avoid pellets and processed foods as much as possible. Um, as I said, I've been conditioning these guys for about a month and they've had pellets maybe twice in that time period and those times were maybe when I was running late in the morning and couldn't give them um, a morning meal of blood worms because I didn't have time to thaw them out or whatever. So try to avoid the pellets and the processed foods just because you want to give them the healthiest diet you can and even the best pellet on the market is not the healthiest diet for these fish. That said, again, if you're in a country or wherever you live and you can't get access to frozen foods and you can't get access to live foods, you can use pellets. It's just my personal opinion that that's not the ideal diet for these guys, so I try to avoid feeding them too much of the pellets. I don't completely get rid of it because I fully admit that I am lazy and it is nice to be able to just throw pellets at these guys sometimes, so um, I'm not knocking pellets at all. But if you can, I recommend trying to feed them frozen or live, um, at, at least while you're conditioning them. Now, uh, Rapashi, I will admit I haven't used a whole lot because again, I'm lazy and the whole having to cook it thing is just beyond me. And plus it's hard to break up into small enough chunks to feed individual containers like this. But Rapashi, is a good product and it is kind of a decent go between between a dry food and a, a frozen or a live food because it's a gel it's got less fillers and additives and stuff like that so um, if you do have rapashi i you can try it out i just personally don't have a lot of experience with using that to condition my fish i do feed it to my fry when i have it and it's great for fry I just don't have a ton of experience using it specifically for um, adult breeding fish. The last thing I feed my fish is raw fish. And I know some of you might be thinking that's crazy, but it really is really healthy. And if you look at a lot of the higher quality fish foods, you'll see whole salmon, whole shrimp, krill, stuff like that. So. Um, it's super healthy and one of my favorite fish, one of my favorite types of fish for conditioning my breeders 
is salmon because salmon is nice and fatty. It really helps females pack on the extra weight and make eggs, big fat, nice eggs. Um, so I do feed salmon. I just thaw it out and break it up with my fingers into little bite-sized pieces for them. I'll give them one or two chunks, you know, however much makes them full. Um, the thing with salmon or any raw fish that you want to be aware of is they will foul the water the quickest out of all of the foods I've mentioned. So if you feed a raw food like that, you're going to want to make sure you change the water at the very minimum the next day. Normally what I like to do is feed it in the morning and then change the water in the evening. So those are the foods I feed. As I said, everybody has different opinions on that, but that's just what I've had the most success with. My number one go-to, frozen blood worms, live foods if and when I can get them. Um, and then I try to steer clear of the processed foods as much as possible. Um, I touched a little bit on water quality, but as normal or as usual, you're going to want to keep the water super clean. And because we feed these guys so heavily when we're conditioning them, I really highly suggest upping your water changes. So if you're only uh, changing your water once a week or twice a week, I would consider adding an extra water change or even changing every day. Now my jars have little cycled filters in here you guys might have seen in some of my past videos. So um, ammonia and nitrates really aren't a big issue in these jars. These jars can go for about a week before they need a water change but when I'm feeding my fish super heavily like I am these guys I do try to do at least a small water change every other day. Um, again, especially if I'm feeding something like raw salmon, I'll do a 25 to 40% water change every day on just these jars, just these fish that I know I'm about to breed really soon. The other fish that are in maintenance mode or they're not being bred anytime soon, they usually don't get the raw fish and they usually don't get quite as much food as the fish I know I'm about to breed. Um, the last thing I'll touch on, again, I personally find that having my fish carded or flare trained helps them spawn. This is a personal opinion. I have friends that completely disagree with me and they don't keep their fish carded at all and have no problems with spawn. So it's just an experience thing and everybody's experiences are different. Um, but for me, I found having them carded and uncarding them and um, getting them to flare a little bit just really seems to help them. So you'll notice that their sight is blocked from each other. And um, twice a day or three times a day, however many times I feed them, I'll remove the cards and let them flare. Now, um, some people like to put their breeding pairs right next to each other when they're conditioning so that they can get to know each other, so that they're always seeing the fish that they're gonna breed with. Um, I just happen to have these two pairs together on the shelf because I'm doing these videos, so I wanna show you them all in the frame. But normally, I'll just have them scattered throughout my shelf, so they might be flaring with a fish that is not the one they're actually gonna spawn with, but it's just the flaring itself that I find um, important. For instance, this female, while she doesn't flare a lot at the male, um, she's not scared of him and she shows interest in him. Whereas before I carded her, whenever I would show her a male, she would get very scared. And so if I just put her directly in the spawn tank with her acting like that, she would probably end up hiding and not spawning. So by carding her and letting her get a little bit of self-confidence back, it's made it so that she's not scared of this male. Now, she, again, doesn't really flare at him, um, but she looks at him. He's hiding behind his jar or his filter right now. Whereas this female loves to flare. She was trained as a show fish, so she was trained to flare from a very young baby, and she will flare at the male. And I just find that them being able to do this behavior and not be scared of other fish just really helps their confidence in the spawn tank. But again, 
that's just an opinion of mine. If you aren't able to card your fish or you don't want to or you don't believe in it for whatever reason, that's fine. It's definitely not required. It's just something I wanted to mention because I have found it to be very helpful. I have personally found that when I don't card my fish, they are lazy and they don't breed for me. But as I said, I have friends that have different experiences, so you kind of have to just um, take what people say with a grain of salt and see what works best for your situation. Okay, guys, so we pretty much covered it. You want to feed them as much as they want to eat, two to three, even four times a day if you have that kind of time. I don't. Usually it's twice a day for me, um, three times if I happen to um, have time. Um, as much as they want to eat, keep the water super clean. And if you're of the same opinion as I am, give them time to flare. It doesn't have to be with the fish they're actually spawning with, but any fish, if you have several and they're not next to each other, whatever fish they flare to is fine. I am not a big believer in introducing pairs where we condition them and they get to know each other because I just don't believe fish have that level of personality where they're going to recognize that other fish. They recognize it as a female, but I don't think he, he would remember that female against a different female. So I don't find it's really important to keep them next to each other when they're in the conditioning process. But again, some people prefer to do it that way. It's just about what you think will work best for you. So before I turn off the camera, I wanted to show you just how much food I'm talking about when I say feed them as much as they want. So as I said, I've got some thawed frozen blood worms here. Um, you can boost the nutrition of these by adding um, liquid vitamins if you want to, or um, there's a great product called Selcon, at least in the U.S. That's a additive mainly for brine shrimp, but it's like a fish oil additive, and sometimes I soak my blood worms in that as well to give them a little bit of added nutrition, but you'll see I give them a ton of worms. I've I always laugh when I hear people recommend only feed like three or four blood worms because they can just they can eat so much more than that. And this is what I'm feeding them twice a day, sometimes three times again. And what I do is I give them a bunch of worms like that. I'll go through and feed my other fish and I come back and if they finished all of them, I give them more until they have a nice big round belly. Um, sometimes they even have a little bit of a food coma, but because this is a food that they're designed to eat, they have no problem eating a bunch of it, digesting it, and being able to move on to their next meal. And I'm hoping that if you guys go back and look at the other videos and compare these fish to now, you'll be able to see a little bit of how much they've bulked up. Um, it's very hard to see that male because of my lighting. But all of these fish have gained a lot of weight. They all have big round bellies and the females have a lot of eggs. They're actually ready to go. I could put them in the spawn tank tonight if I wanted to and they would probably spawn. But again, I want to take the time and get this all filmed for you guys. So we're going slow, which is not my... Um, style so it's really hard for me but um, definitely next week we're gonna get these guys in spawn tanks and I'm pretty confident that they're gonna spawn but we never know there's always fish that like to prove you wrong so all right guys thanks for watching as usual if you have any questions feel free to contact me on YouTube or my Facebook page um, I have an Instagram now that I've been trying to remember to post pictures on and stuff like that. Um, sometimes I'm posting things on Instagram that you guys aren't seeing on Facebook or YouTube. Um, so be sure to follow me there. Um, thanks for liking, subscribing, and again, if you want to see the rest of the series, make sure you hit the notification button so that you know when I post the next video. Alright guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.